Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm so excited. This is one of the videos that I've been looking forward to making ever since we started this channel earlier this year. And the good thing is I'm gonna teach you guys how you can start doing backyard bird photography, extremely affordable. We're gonna go over some of the mistakes I've made to help you so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. So let's get to the video. Again, guys, thanks for tuning in to Dale Frazier Photography. If you're new to the channel, I'd like to introduce myself real quick. My name is Dale. Back in, I want to say it was late November, maybe December, I started building a bird blind that I could set inside. I wanted a roof over it in case it was rainy or something like that. I could still be out there with all my camera gear and not worry about getting wet or the camera getting wet or anything like that. So the first little building that we're going to be showing, and I'll be showing this in the background as we're talking about it, is a bird blind that's not, this is not a conventional deal that your average backyard birder is going to do. But what I want to explain to you, every bit of this blind that I made, I made it out of either scrap wood, junk wood, uh, the metal on the top of it was some stuff that a guy was throwing away. So it is something that you can do if you just kind of look around and find the right pieces and parts. You could put something together like this for absolutely free. The only thing I really got involved in this, money-wise, out of my pocket, was a handful of screws. So for maybe less than 10 bucks, I was able to build this bird blind. And it's roughly four foot wide, and it's maybe eight foot long. So that way me and my wife could both be in there. And again, I know that's not conventional, but here's one of the things that I did learn from doing that. And where I put it, I put it back in the woods. There's kind of a clearing in the back of my property where we got abundance of trees and there's kind of a clearing. So what I did for the feeder to make it a little more natural looking is I put a, used a stump that I found and the stump is what I pour the feed out. And you'll see some pictures here. And I was really proud of a lot of the pictures that I've taken from this, but I wanted to improve it even more. My downside to this is with it being inside the trees, it's extremely low light almost all day long. What I was able to do was move that stump a little bit further to the west, and I was able to get at least some e evening sunshine, like that golden hour sunshine that we're always looking for for portraits or photography anyways, which make things look better anyhow, so that it's at least got better lighting. However, most of the day, which is actually a good thing because if you're wanting to go shoot in shade, you can go out there any time of the day and shoot. So that's good there, but it is low light. So that's something to think about. And that is placement of where you're gonna put your feeder. Secondary to that on the placement, aside from the lighting, I'm gonna show you a couple other pictures of some cheap feeders that I made. This was made out of a scrap piece of like one by 12 or whatever. And I put a little lip around it so that the bird seed don't just fall off. The good thing about this is you can kind of in your backyard look around, find some places where either you got some good morning light or good evening light, or maybe even like the, the original blind that I was showing you where you've got some shade all day long. So what I did on these is I've got a handful of pictures of the birds and they were all right, but I was like, man, I just really need something a little more natural. So what I ended up doing is you'll notice in the pictures that I'll be posting of just the feeders, we're gonna have like little branches for the birds to land on. And that's where you get the more natural pictures and the ones that I'm more pleased with. And I'll show you pictures of them as well. When you get ready to go buy your food guys, and I'm gonna throw up some pictures of different bird food, kind of check your local, I, I went to Tractor Supply. They, they've been nothing but good to me. So that's where I've been buying my bird seed from. But they've got different blends for different types of birds. And there's a fair amount of birds and you'll see like, I've got some pictures of some indigo bunnings, for example, and the blue gross beak, they always tend to go to the ground. So what I do typically is every, every morning I get up and I refill the feeders and I'll put all the old food down on the ground and that's what your bird feeders or your <laughs> ground feeders will end up coming to. The doves will come to it. The, we've got a, a brown haired, our brown head, uh, cowbird, he always goes to the ground. There's a fair amount, uh, summer tanager. Haven't seen her at the feeder, but she'll feed around and eat the worms and stuff or bugs that are around the feed also. 
So there's a fair amount of birds that you're going to be getting on the ground. But back to the placement of the feeders, one of the things that you want to think about when you're putting your feeder and your landing branch or your perch, whatever you want to call it, try to get it in an area wherever you're going to have your camera set up to where you've got a nice background. And, and I've really spent more time on trying to find a good background than I did the lighting. And that was one of the mistakes that I made. But if you can spend a little more time and think about where the sun's coming from, where it's going to be so that you have the better lighting, plus have you a nice backdrop. I did end up building another real cheap board feeder because according to my bird app, there was some other birds in the area that like the oranges, like the Boston Orioles. And I ended up, I've got some nails in that, in that one and you can see where I was hanging oranges. I never did get a Boston Oriole over to my place. Allegedly they were flying through and I just missed them. However, for you guys that are up north, all these birds right now, it's the perfect time to be getting your yard set up for the different kinds of birds that are going to be flying through your area. So again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. If you haven't checked out all of our how-to videos on camera shooting and manual and stuff like that, I'll put a playlist up here for you to watch. Oh yeah, and before I forget, one thing while we're talking about the feeders, don't forget about the hummingbirds, guys, because they're an interesting little bird and they're migrating back up north right now too. I've already gotten a handful of decent photos of some hummingbirds. The great thing about the hummingbird, do the feeder placement just like we were talking about with the other bird feeders where you got a nice backdrop. That's going to make it a lot funner for your hummingbird pictures. But the one cool thing that you don't necessarily need for the hummingbirds, you don't necessarily need a landing branch because most of the time that hummingbird will come in, take a drink, and then he'll back up just enough to where you can crop out in camera and not have the feeder in the camera or worst case scenario you got a little bit of the feeder but you got most of the bird in your in frame then you can crop down in photoshop or something like that but don't forget about the hummingbird guys they're a lot of fun too until next week next week we're going to go a little more into the equipment that i'm using to get up close so that we can take some in my mind what are really good to great bird pictures. So again, until next week's when we get into the tools of the trade, be sure to check out one of the other playlists. Again, guys, thanks for the thumbs up. We appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. We're almost at 100 subscribers. If you guys know anybody that likes birding or into that kind of stuff, please share our video with them and tell them to come join us. We'd love to have them bring them along with us as we go on this it's going to be a fun summer shooting some birds and we're going to get into some infrared photography. We got some great things coming up. Again, guys, let's go shoot some stuff.